everyone. Welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours because we are covering the oh so wonderful Tanuki. This episode is, of course, a very special listener episode dedicated to Amber, who wrote in regarding the Tanuki not only on email, but also on Instagram. So, Amber, thank you for writing into the show, and thank you for such a great suggestion. Even going on Google Images for the Tanuki is a good time. So, thank you, Amber. And if any of you want to learn about a particular animal, make sure to write into the show in one of three ways. The first one being through Instagram to the Relax with Animal Facts Instagram, or you can send an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. The last alternative option, if you want to go a bit old school, is you can send a carrier pigeon, and there is a guarantee on this show that if I ever get a carrier pigeon with an animal suggestion, you can bet that that suggestion is going to be given top priority. And before we get into the review portion of the show, I just wanted to say how grateful I am for all of you listening. I have made a little thing on Instagram for any of you that have posted uh, stuff on your stories in regards to the show. I just woke up this morning to such a cool little uh, video by Egon, who had requested the last Carrier Pigeon episode, and as well as Kendall's awesome uh, Instagram story for the previous episode. I had such a big smile on my face when watching those uh, Instagram stories or videos that you guys made in regards to the show. It is hard to believe uh, how many awesome listeners there are out there that are fans of the show. I started this podcast in uh, my closet with my cell phone to record the episodes. If you were to tell me that in just a little bit I would be getting these awesome videos from you guys and just so many animal suggestions, I likely would not have believed you. And so with that uh, out of the way, let's go to a review coming all the way again from the United States of America. This was written by, uh, their name might be a little hard for me to pronounce. There's a lot of N-I's, uh, Nee, 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 uh, and uh, Nee, Nee wrote in via Apple Podcasts. And telling from the message, I assume this is written by Rebecca. And so Rebecca writes, I love to listen to your podcast. And can you do one on doggies? My dog will lay in my bed and listen with me. I told him you will be on one soon. P.S. I have anxiety and this helps me so much. Keep going. Love, Rebecca. P.P.S. I also love flies and animals. P-P-P-S. I'm nine, so... There's a lot of O's in that one. So, yeah, this is so special. P-P-P-P-P-S. I go fishing with my dad, and we saw fish flying out of the water, and we saw a kingfish. And then there are a ton 
of fish emojis and uh, different fish there. And I think that there's a dolphin in there somewhere. So thank you, Rebecca, for the wonderful review and for all the PPSs there in your message. I am very glad that you got to go fishing with your dad and that you even saw fish flying out of the water. If you want to leave a review like Rebecca did because you find the show helpful to you, it would mean the world for the show, but your listenership is already gift enough that you would join me and uh, give me such good company as we go into these different habitats. So I am just going to say where I got my facts from, and then we are going to start on our adventure. I got my facts from treehugger.com, mentalfloss.com, animals.net, and merriamwebster.com for the etymology, because I had a bit of a hard time finding it elsewhere. If you want to learn more, I am going to leave those links in the description of the episode so you can check them out. Without those resources, this episode would not have been possible. So now I would like all of you to notice perhaps where you're carrying some tension. Could be in the neck, in the head. Maybe you've been exercising a lot today, running outside, in the grass, if you're anywhere else other than Canada. In Canada, perhaps you have been snowshoeing, and so you want to relax now. Try to notice where you are carrying tension, if any. For me, it's probably mostly in my face, because I have been smiling a whole bunch at your guys' messages and your videos. So I am going to do my best to try to relax my face, and I would like for all of you to do your best to do so right alongside me as we go into this immersive experience with me, Steph Wolf, into the forests where the Tanuki resides. And so you might be able to tell a little bit of what the Tanuki is just by the sound they make. But the Tanuki is a wild canid species native to Japan that is related to wolves, foxes, and domestic dogs. It is also known, apart from its name Tanuki, as the Japanese raccoon dog. And it is a subspecies of the raccoon dog that is found in mainland Asia. And so just because I love you guys, I am going to say the scientific name of the Tanuki, although its name is longer than anything I have seen before. So its scientific name is Nycteriotus procyonoides. Viverinus, the person that was in charge of naming this creature, has struck again just to make sure that the scientific name is as difficult for me to pronounce it as humanly possible. But with that out of the way, let me try to describe what this animal looks like, and then you can search it up yourself whenever you have a free moment. So it has very thick fur, it has a masked face, as you can often see on raccoons, and it also has a curious nature. The Tanuki has served as a cultural icon in Japanese folklore for centuries. This bushy-tailed animal is known as a mischievous trickster and can even be spotted in Nintendo video games 
and some different films. For those of you that have played Super Mario Brothers, it is in Super Mario Brothers 3 in which Mario can put on a Tanuki suit and transform into a raccoon-like animal. And so this animal has some serious credit to its name. And at the top of the show, we said that you can find the Tanuki in forests, and that is certainly true. But you can also see them in farmlands and urban areas as well. So the forests that you'll see them in is going to be in deciduous, mixed, and evergreen forests. Basically, they enjoy areas in which there is a close proximity to water and adequate food sources as well. And in terms of these food sources, they are omnivorous animals. You perhaps have heard that term a couple of times, but in case you don't know what it means, let me describe it for you. Omnivorous is between the two sort of feeding patterns that are known as carnivorous and herbivorous. Herbivores will eat things like plants and things of that nature, while carnivores are going to eat strictly things that are like meat and other things that fit into that category. So omnivores, which is what the tanuki is, will mean that they eat both plants and animals. So they will eat rodents, carrion, fish, mollusks, birds, eggs, reptiles, frogs, but then they will also enjoy fruits, berries, and nuts. And so it seems like the tanuki is not a very picky eater. They will eat a lot of what comes into their general direction. And in terms of the noises that they make, these raccoon dogs do not bark. Instead of that barking sound like a dog, raccoon dogs will give off a high-pitched whine or a whimper, which can be interpreted as either submissive or friendly behavior. But if they ever feel threatened, they will growl. And unfortunately, they do not wag their tails, but like dogs, they will use their sense of smell, meaning their olfactory senses, to sniff for food. And according to researchers, despite their masked appearance, the tanuki is not a close relative of the common raccoon. Instead, they belong to that Canidae family, which is right alongside wolves and foxes. And so appearances can be deceiving, and perhaps that is why the tanuki is associated with a trickster kind of behavior. While you normally don't see your dog climbing trees, tree climbing is a skill that the tanuki has. And in fact, the tanuki is one of two canid species that have this trait. And they are accomplished climbers thanks to the curved claws that they have, and will sometimes climb these trees to forage for fruits or berries among the branches. And in addition to this amazing trait that they have, they will also be good at swimming. And I would like to think it is only a doggy paddle. But when they swim, they will also dive underwater to hunt and forage for food beneath the surface. We have had plenty of creatures that are solitary, but these guys are not going to fit into that category. 
but if it were possible for these animals to be on the opposite spectrum, that is where they would be. They are very social creatures. Companionship and family are very important for these critters, and they will usually live in monogamous pairs or in small, close-knit groups. And in the wintertime, a mating pair will share a den and raise a litter of pups together. The male tanuki has been observed taking part in family life in ways that other species do not do. And they will bring food to their pregnant mates and help to raise their pups, which will live alongside them for four to five months after birth, before leaving the nest. They do not have nests, but I was just using that as a sort of colloquial expression. So they believe family to be very important, which is something that is awesome among animal species. One more thing that makes them very cool and unique is that they are the only canines that hibernate. You might recall seeing somewhere on a documentary or something in which you see wolves and foxes and other canines having no trouble trekking through the snowy, barren winter months. You might even spot a wild steph wolf shoveling his driveway, but the tanuki prefers to wait out this snow and hunker down. In early winter, they will gain weight and decrease their metabolism by 25 to 50 percent before settling inside their burrows until they see some of that warmer weather. And they are known as communal hibernators, meaning that they don't hibernate in a solitary condition. They prefer to be in close proximity with others in particular, their mating partners. But by definition, they actually enter a state of what is called torpor rather than hibernation because they remain semi-conscious and will emerge to forage on especially warm days. So while it may not be exactly to the letter hibernation, it is a kind of semi-conscious state. And if you are in North America and want to see a tanuki in a zoo, Atlanta is home to the only tanukis in a U.S. zoo. These little guys can be found all over Europe, Russia, China, Estonia, Japan, of course, and Scandinavia, but you would be very hard-pressed to find them in North America. If you want to see one really up close, you will have to travel to Zoo Atlanta, which has been home to the brothers Loki and Thor since they arrived from Italy in 2012. And so, while we may have listeners out there in other places where they can see tanukis a little bit more easily, here in North America, this Atlanta Zoo is really one of the only places you can find them. Although, since this article was written, it is certainly possible that that has changed in some way. And the tanuki has a gestation period of between 61 to 70 days. So really not that long in comparison to many of the animals we have covered on the show previously. The litters generally are going to have about six or seven pups. That is what a baby tanuki is called, a pup but numbers of up to 16 in one litter have been recorded, so there is a good amount of range possible within this 
creature's family. These pups will nurse for up to two months and will be fully grown at about four and a half months of age. They will reach maturity at about eight to ten months and begin searching for a partner. Because of the fact that the tanuki has a pretty short gestation period, of course relative, but relative to many of the animals we have covered on this show, it is pretty short. In combination with the fact that they can have so many puppies, the tanuki population can really skyrocket pretty quickly. A white tanuki, which is extremely rare, has recently been discovered. In 2013, an all-white tanuki with blue eyes was found on a farm in Japan. A wildlife instructor thought the tanuki's snow-white coat was inherited rather than being caused by albinism. And that is something that I will have to search up right after this episode. Let us go to the final fact of the episode, and that is the name Tanuki. What is its etymology? Where does this word come from? This was incredibly challenging for me to find any solid lineage other than the fact that in Japanese, this means raccoon dog. If I have any Japanese listeners out there, if you have any more information about the name Tanuki or where it comes from, I would be greatly appreciative to learn more about that and even add it to a future episode in reference back to this one. That is to say, if I ever say anything about an animal that is incorrect or needs more information to clear something up and you know about it, please send me a message and I will be sure to clear it up on a future episode. Thank you all for listening to this episode. I loved learning about the Tanuki and I greatly encourage all of you when you have a free moment to search up these adorable little guys. If you want to learn about a particular animal on the podcast, please send a message to Relax with Animal Facts on Instagram or send an email to Relax with Animal Facts at gmail.com. I respond to each and every one of you. And if by chance I do miss your message, please send it to me again if I have not responded because it is possible that you got lost in the clutter and I would hate to leave any of you guys hanging. And so thank you again, Amber, for this wonderful suggestion. And I hope that you will all join me on the very next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.